adding targets, and creating paths. In this video, I'm going to go through how to add targets to a given work object, convert those targets into a path, and also I'll show you how to use the auto path generation feature of Robot Studio. Let's get started. So here I have a simulation that I've created in my last video when I went through and created a work object. As a quick review, review from the last video, my work object that I had created is called my part. And so going forward, we're going to use that work object. So work object of my part and the tool of pen TCP. Now let's get into how to make this or how to create these targets. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go up here and we want to select create target. We then need to double check and make sure that we have the correct work object selected. And we're then going to go in and in this case here I want to use the uh, surface selection and the snap end selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, I'm going to highlight this position, and I'm going to zoom in a bit, click on my first point, and I'm going to work my way around these edges, and there we go, I've got my six points. I can go in and I'm going to rename my target name and we're going to call this outside. And I'm going to leave it outside 10. And then I, when I hit the create button, it's going to automatically create me outside 10 through 60. I can then say close. And now I have all of my targets. Now we're going to run into a problem here right away. And I'm going to show you what that problem is now. If we right click on our first target, I can go in and I can say view robot at target. And we get this error message down here saying target is outside of reach or is out of reach. Now the reason for this comes down to the fact that if I pan around and I take a look at the orientation of my target versus the orientation of my TCP, you'll notice that the z-axis on my target is pointing out of the surface of the part and the z-axis on my tool is pointing down towards the floor. This means that my robot is actually going to try and reach up through the bottom of the conveyor to try and reach this target, which isn't correct. So what we'll do next is we'll orient target 10 in a way that's going to work. So I'm going to say right click on this target and I'm going to rotate it. And I want to rotate around the Y. Let's go by 200 degrees. I say apply. Immediately my robot snaps to the target because it can actually reach it now. And then what I also want to do is I want to rotate around the X a little bit and we're going to rotate around the X by let's say negative 20 degrees. And there we go. That looks like a decent posture for our robot to use. And we're going to close that. And now what I want to do is I want to be able to apply this same orientation to all of my targets. So one of the ways that we can do this is we can either go in and right click on the next target, uh, go to modify target, rotate, and punch in the same rotational values to every single target, or if we want to make things easier we can right click on our target that we've just modified and we're going to co or go to copy orientation. We're then going to select the rest of our targets, right click, and we're going to apply orientation. Now, if I scroll down through these, I can see my robot is reaching all of those points without any issues. 
So now I've done the first step of creating all of these targets. The next thing that I need to do is because I want my robot to actually run this as a path, I need to create a path. So I'm going to click on empty path and by default it names it path 10. So I want to rename this outside. And I want to move all of my positions into this path. So I'm going to grab all of these positions, 10 through 60. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say add to path outside. And we'll add it as the first point. So now we end up with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way through. And this isn't really going to close off my loop. So we'll notice that as I go around, it doesn't move back to the initial position because I didn't teach a seven or 0.70, but I don't need to because what I can do is I can actually go in and I can say, I want to go back to 0.10. So I'm going to right click on 10. I'm going to say add to path outside. And I want to add it as the last point. Now it's going to move from 10 all the way through 60 and back to 10. So now we have our joints all good to go. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to get it so that it can actually run this. Because if I right click right now and I say move along path, you notice it doesn't really move through all of the operations. It kind of gets stuck. So the reason for this is because of the configuration of the robot. So the configuration, if we right click on one of these, or right click on one of our points, and we go to configurations, You'll notice that there's four different methods that the robot can use to hit this configuration. So that being said, I need to figure out a method of the robot being postured that it can actually hit all of these configurations in a smooth motion. So there's a number of ways I can do this. I can either go point by point or I can let Robot Studio do the work for me. So I'm going to choose to use that option. I'm going to select my path. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say auto configuration. And I want to say that it's linear and circular move instructions. So what it did is it just figured out what is the best orientation to use for all of these. So now I can say move along path. And it moves around just like it should. Perfect. Now, one thing that I did for setup that I should have mentioned before here is you'll notice that when I move over this, it's going to use the move L. And it's using velocity of 1,000, zone 0, and so on. Now, where does it assume that I want those values? Well, I'll show you where it actually pulls that from. Down at the bottom here, you're going to see this move L, velocity 1000, zone 0, T pen, and so on and so on. This is where it gets the default point values. So if I had these set at zone 50, for example, it would default every one of my instructions when I create my path to a zone of 50. So you need to watch out to make sure that this is set correctly. Similarly, I want to reduce the speed here because 1,000 is just way too fast. So in this case, I'm going to grab all of these instructions. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say modify the instruction. Go to speed. And let's say that we want to run that gluing operation at 200. Now I can 
move along path and it's going to move it slower at 200. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to set this up so that I can run my code when I press play. So I'm going to try that right now. I'm going to try and press play to run the simulation and nothing. We get a program started, program stopped. Now why is this? Well, I'll tell you. The reason that it's doing this is because although we've created this path, the controller doesn't actually have any code in it. This is a path within the simulation. So in order to move it over to the controller, what we want to do is we want to hit this synchronize up top here. When we say synchronize, it's going to say, okay, well, what do you want to synchronize? And I want to synchronize outside to module one on my controller. So I'm going to say OK. And now it just pushed that con or code into my controller. Now I can hit play and again, nothing. So I've gone through the steps of creating my targets. I've created a path. I've synchronized it to my controller but it's still not running. Well, the secret here is in the name. So I've created my module called, or sorry, I've created my task called outside. When you do this, if we go over to the rapid tab and look at the module, we've got module one. Under module one, we have main and we have outside. Now, if you've done any programming on a real robot, you know what I've done here. I've actually made a routine called outside. And if we double check our rapid code, the code that our robot is trying to execute is this procedure main, but procedure main doesn't contain anything. All of our code is contained under our procedure outside. So what I need to do is I need to add outside to my procedure main. So let's do that now. So we just simply type outside and use semicolon for our end of line character. We can then close this and we, it's going to ask, do we want to apply the changes? Yes, we do want to apply the changes. And now that we've applied those changes, we can get our robot to execute that code. So that is one method of creating a path within Robot Studio. Now I'm going to show you the real power behind Robot Studio because we're going to create a path without programming a single target. So let's take a look at that now. Robot Studio has the ability to use this function called AutoPath. So when I open up AutoPath, I'm going to create a path around this inside curve. And so we're going to start over here. And there's our first section of our path. We're then going to zoom in a little bit. We can get a hold of the edge. And I need to grab a edge that lines up. And what's happened here is because I actually ended up with my path built on the inside edge, I need to get rid of this. What I need to do is I need to make sure that I'm building my path on the top edge here. 
where Z is pointing down. That's that blue arrow pointing down. And then now what I can do is I can grab all the way around my given part. And now I have my path with a ton of points. Now, the thing you might notice about this is there's a whole bunch of lines here. That's because this is actually a linear path. If I want it to follow the arc properly, I need to say that it's a circular path. And then we need to adjust our tolerances and so on. But in this case, I'm just going to say it's circular. And we've got all of our paths following around. I've got my zone of zero. I'm going to change my velocity down to 400 for this curve. And I'm going to say create. And when I do this, it automatically creates targets 10 through 90. And in my path here, it's automatically created myself a path. Now, you'll notice that we've got this exclamation point saying that the target may not be reachable with the current configuration. We also have this red um, stop symbol here. Now this is because if we take a look at our targets, when this auto path is created, I'm going to zoom out a bit, we're going to take a look at the way that these targets are oriented. So the first target, the x-axis is pointing out this way. That's okay. Moving on to the next one, the x-axis is pointing here. And the next one, the x-axis is pointing this way. Now, based on this, if we zoom out and pan to the point that we can see where our robot is postured, we're going to notice that between points 10 and 20, the robot's having to flip completely. And it can't even reach point 20. So what we need to do is we need to grab a hold of point 10 and we're going to again copy the orientation and apply that orientation to all points from 10 to 90. And now when I move through these points, you can see that my tool is able to follow it. So now we can go down to path 10 and we're going to right click on path 10 and we're going to do that same auto configuration, say linear and circular. And it's going to ask us which orientation do we want to try and apply to everything. So I'm going to say configuration one. Normally the first configuration is usable. So I'm going to say I want configuration one. So now, we're getting that nice run around the curve. So we're starting at 10 and moving our, all, our way all the way down through. So now what we need to do is we need to rename path 10. So I want to call this my curve. And I want to deploy this to my robot. So we're going to again go to synchronize. Then just as you may have guessed, we have to go back to rapid. Go into our main module, and we need to add curve. As a routine called by main. 
We can then apply to apply our changes to the module. Close out of our rapid code. Go back to our simulation. And now our robot runs through the entire program. Now, there's a couple little glitches here still, and we want to make this a little bit more of a functional program. So instead of having my robot start on the surface, go around, and then drag across the surface, I want to have my robot move up in the air in between the movements. So the easiest way to do this is we can go to position 10, or outside 10, and we're going to make a duplicate. So I'm just going to use my keyboard shortcuts of copy and paste, and I end up with 10-2. So I'm going to say, I want this to be A10 for above. Then I'm going to right click on that, and we're going to modify the target, and this time we're going to modify it with an offset. So I'm going to say, I want to offset in the Z by 30 millimeters. And I don't want to offset in the Z local because that's going to move straight down or at an angle down. Instead, what I want to do is I want to offset by the world 30. And this will move 30 above my given position. Say close. And we're going to do the same with position 10. We're going to make a duplicate. We're going to call it A10. Modify offset. And again, in the world, we're going to go 20 on that and apply, close. And now we need to make sure that these are added to each of our programs. So for target A10, because that's part of curve, I need to right click and we're going to go add to path curve. And I want to add it as first, right click add to path curve, add it as last, so it'll be at the beginning and the end. And we're going to do the same for outside. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to again synchronize. And just so that I can see this better, I'm going to right click on my part. And I'm going to go to view and turn off visible. That's going to hide the part and all the position data associated with it. And let's try running this. Much better. That looks like a decent simulation. So that was how to add targets, add paths, and use the auto path function within Robot Studio to create a path for your robot to write a program. Now, as you can see, this is an extremely powerful tool. In later videos, I'll show you how to take this data and push it to a real world robot so that you no longer have to program using a pendant. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.